Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to merge data in R. So in the video I'm going to use the following two example data sets that we can create here in lines 2 to 7 of our code. So if you run this code you will see that two new data objects appear here at the top right of our studio. Uh, we can also have a look at the data by double clicking on these data objects. So uh, first we will have a look at data one. And as you can see, the data has an ID column as well as the two columns X1 and X2. And uh, the data two object um, also has an ID column and the two columns with the names Y1 and Y2. Um, what you also can see is that the IDs of data 2 are from 4 to 9 and the IDs of data 1 range from 1 to 6. So the IDs are partly the same, but not all IDs exist in both data frames. So now um, we can apply the merge function that is already available in the basic installation of R. And um, within the function, we simply need to specify our two data frames that we want to merge. So in our case, data one and data two. And then we also need to specify based on which column we want to merge our two data frames. So in this case, in this example, uh, we have the column ID in common. So for that reason, I'm specifying here that I want to use the column ID in order to merge our two data sets. So let's see what happens when we run this line of code. So now you can see here at the bottom of the RStudio console that a new data set is returned. And uh, as you can see, this data set only contains the IDs 4, 5 and 6 because these three IDs were in common in both data sets. What you also can see is that the new data frame contains all other columns of our two data sets. So uh, the column X1 and X2 of our data one and the columns Y1 and Y2 of our second data frame. Yeah, so this is also called an inner join because it's only um, retaining the rows for which we have an ID in both data frames. However, there are also other types of merging available in R. And in the second example, I want to show you how to keep all values of our first data set, so of data one. And uh, this is something we can do based on the all x argument within the merge function. So if we specify all x equal to be true, then the first input data set, so in this case data one, will be kept with all its rows. So if we run this line of code, you can see that now the data that is returned is uh, here in these lines, uh, the same as before. But in addition to that, uh, our code kept all values of the first data frame. What you also can see is that um, the merge function assigned a NA value, so a not available value to all cells of our new data where the ID was not in both data sets. So we could do the same with the second data set by simply specifying all Y equal to true. So if you run this line of code, then it's the other way around that all rows of the second data frame are kept, but uh, only the rows of the first data frame are kept for which a match is found in the second data frame. Yeah, and then in the next example, we can also specify both of these arguments to be equal to true. And then you probably know it already. All rows of both data frames are kept in the merged data. Yeah, so another thing I want to show you in the next example is uh, that the merge function also allows to merge multiple data frames, not only two data frames as we have done until now. So for this example, we need to create another data frame, uh, which I call data three. So if you run lines 14 to 16 of our code, 
then a new data set is appearing here at the top right. Again, we can have a look at the data. And also this data set has an ID column and the variables set one and set two. Now, if we want to merge this data set together with our other two data sets, data one and data two, then um, you could simply apply a step-by-step -step approach. So first, you could merge the first two data sets as I'm doing here in line 18 and uh, store these merged data in the data object data one, two. So if you have a look at this data object, you can see this is what we have done before, but this time we stored the data in a new data object. And then afterwards, we could merge this data with our third data frame. So this is what I am doing here in line 19. Yeah, and now you can see that all the three data sources are merged within a single data set. Yeah, so this is basically what I wanted to show you in this video. However, if you want to learn more about the merge function and also about other merging functions of the R programming language, then you could have a look at my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published several tutorials on the merging of data and um, in one of these tutorials I have explained the examples of this video in more detail and I will put a link to this tutorial in the description of this video. Also if you have liked the video of course I would be very happy if you leave me a comment and if you give me thumbs up on the video and um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get notifications about future releases of new videos. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye bye.